Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything NFL Week 9 previews. We got some big games this week. Chris, how are you? I'm good, man. All right. Of course, I'm Gary. He is Chris. Let's uh, let's fire into this. This is Winning Cures Everything. Of course, we talk football, and then in the offseason, we talk everything else. So, but during the season, we are football specific. You got to love it. You got to love it. NFL Week 9. We, uh, we do have some big-time matchups this week. And, of course, us talking about it is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. The South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six. Count them. Six. Incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. They got good stuff going down there. I mean, it's great stuff. Great stuff. So, tunicatravel.com. Go check them out. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, our previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc., Go check that out. The football picks contest. Stacy Lewis won last week, went eight and two, and won the tiebreaker. Got a fifty dollar gift certificate at the steakhouse down at I think Horseshoe, and then a twenty five dollar free play at Fitz or something like that. Uh, great prizes every week. Brought to you by Tunica, and they are awesome. So it's free to enter. Go in and check it out. Of course, uh, last week I said Stacy Lewis won. Every week we've had a different winner. It's always a good time. We get the stuff mailed out to you. You go down. You take a visit. It's a fun time. So back to us, though. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that uh, subscribe button. Leave some comments. Share the show out. Tell everybody about it. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click like or whatever it is. And make sure you leave a review. Five-star written review. If you write a review, we'll see it, and we'll read it on the air. We'll talk about it. Because some of you guys are funny. Some of you guys are jokesters, and we like that. So, uh, so go leave a review on Apple Podcast. We appreciate you guys for doing that. Let's fire into game number one. The Patriots at the Ravens. This is Sunday Night Football, 7.20 p.m. It's live from Baltimore. Lamar Jackson against Bill Belichick's defense. And that's going to be a matchup to watch. Sir. Right? Uh, the Ravens' defense has been pretty good. Yeah. So Brady and that bunch going against, you know, Marlon Humphrey and and all those linebackers, all those defensive linemen. That's going to be fun to watch. This is a fun game. Yeah, this should be a really good game. Uh, last week, the Browns were able to run on the Patriots. The uh, the Ravens like to run the football. So oh, yes. That might help them. Also keep Tom and them off the field. Uh, maybe try to wear that defense down. The secondary can't pick the ball off if you're not throwing it a lot. Um, so that could help. Um, and then the other thing is, I'm going to try to stop saying um. <laughs> Tom, you know, he's 42 years old. He's made a point to where he doesn't care. Nothing he does right now matters. Yeah. And so if you're coming at him, he's just throwing the ball on the ground. Oh, yeah. They blitz him, and he can't pick it real quick, and nobody's open real fast. He's, he's just throwing it away and living to fight another day. I mean, smart quarterback play. Oh, yeah. Well, for a 42-year-old man especially, he's not taking those beatings in October, November. No. no Wait, he, he'll hang out in that court, in, in that pocket in January. Yeah. He'll no, I agree with you. hits in January. I agree. Um, And and that, I think that's one of the ways he's been able to continue to play. It's also a reason why at some point in time every year we decide to bury him. And we say, oh, this is the old time. <laughs> this is Look how this bad he's it. looked. He hasn't looked great. He's struggling. He's this, that, another. And then in the playoffs, he cuts people to pieces. Um, I, I think a lot of that is is he, he's just, if you come at him, he's just going to throw the ball away. And if they lose this game, they lose. now he wants to win every game. Ultra competitive. But I I think they'll be okay. Yeah. No, I think I, they'll definitely be fine. Uh, I think that this team is, is shooting for undefeated. I, I think that's what they're looking for because they've made it like this far. They've got a real chance. The schedule sets up nicely. They won the first half. Yeah. And, and I mean, the only thing that is left for them to do, really, for, for Tom and Bill, is you get that undefeated season. To do something nobody's ever done, go 19-0. That's, that's it, right? That's the only thing. And I know it's a completely outrageous goal. Yeah. 
But once you made it through eight of them, it's like... I don't know that they care about that so much. Maybe they do, just because they're playing for God status. Yeah, they're playing for legacy. Yeah, well, the, that's the thing, though. Their legacy's already cemented. Oh, I know. But it, it, it if you go 19-0, and along with all the other stuff that has happened, like it, there will never be anybody better ever. I, I agree. But but there's already I don't not. think that that's, that's necessarily what, the whole goal. The goal is to win, win a championship. One. That's right. Just, yeah. Yeah. When, what's his favorite ring? The next one. The next ring. That's that's you know that's just the way he's wired, man. He's different than everybody else. Bill is different than everybody else. Yeah, I agree. I'm rolling Patriots minus three and a half here. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm obviously going to as well. This is the one game that does scare me because I, I think they can. I think that secondary is so good. Yeah. But if you're running the football constantly, you can gash this team. They're going to have to play better in the trenches. Yeah, I could believe that. I could 100% believe that. All right, let's move on to game number two. Let's talk about the Texans and the Jaguars. Going over to London, it's the early game, 8.30 a.m. Central Time. So you get to get up, make a pot of coffee, hang out, watch a little football on your TV. You get to see the Texans without J.J. Watt against the Jaguars. You get to see Minshew Mania take over London. I think I think the Brits will love Minshew. Oh yeah, everybody loves Minshew. Yeah. He's fantastic. I, I think he's somebody that they could they could catch on to. I mean, TJ told us over in the uh, the gambling one, uh, the NFL gambling picks segment. He told us that uh, that they handed out thirty five thousand fake mustaches at the last game in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, yeah. Like I'm telling, you, everybody loves this guy. He's fantastic, man. He's so much fun. He's Easy to teach. He's everything about this guy is just screams superstar. I agree. And and he can play. Yes. You know, like Baker, it, like it, it screamed superstar because he he wanted to be a superstar when he was winning. Yeah. Last year, and and now maybe not so much. But Minshew, like I don't even know if he has to necessarily win. I think that they will win this week. I, I think they're too. better than the Texans. I do too. Um. This team, man, I cannot wait to see what's going to happen if, like, when Nick Foles comes back. I, I think you just got to trade Nick Foles. Like, I, I, it's ride. a lot of money. Let him ride. We will see. Nick Foles, the eighty million dollar backup. Well, hey, hey, it's a meritocracy, man. Tony man, you Romo road. Right. You rolling Jaguars? Yes. <laughs> like absolutely, yes, sir. absolutely. All right, next game up. This would have been a much bigger matchup, but I don't think Patrick Mahomes is playing this weekend. Yeah, we got two weeks in a row or the two worst weeks for him to miss. Yeah. He misses the, the showdown. The Packers and the... He misses the showdown with Aaron Rodgers, and now he's missing the Vikings game, and the Vikings are coming pretty hot and heavy right now, rolling. Defense is getting it going. Vikings look really good, and... uh and these are two weeks that I would have I would have loved to watch Patrick Mahomes play these teams. A lot of books are waiting to put out lines on this. There are several. It is uh, it is minus two for the Vikings at several different books right now. Uh, we'll see how much that but line not, changes. Yeah, I will say by several we found two. That's uh, there's three now. Okay, there were three. There's three yeah. out of all all of the books that we can search. Yeah, there's three that actually have a lineup. So. You know, eventually, by the end of the week, of course. And if Patrick plays, that number's not going to be Vikings minus two. No. And if he doesn't play, I would imagine that the Vikings line will go up. No, I think it'll probably stay. You think it'll stay yeah, around I two? Think, I think they're making the number without him. And if he plays, they'll change it. Okay. I don't I don't think they're putting it somewhere in the middle. And hoping nah, You may be right. I'm just thinking about the people betting it. Well, people betting it can bet whatever the hell they want. Well, I know, but I, I think can't change that. I well, I'm saying that if people bet it the way that I think they will, if Mahomes doesn't play, I think the Vikings oh, think will be a bigger favorite. Because people, if Vegas yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it'll, it'll be I think it'll I think it'll move if Mahomes isn't playing. Probably right. So I would imagine this gets up to like four. So you know, I could be crazy, but but that's hurt, what I think. The Vikings hurt my Chiefs ten and a half over. Yeah, when season start losing two home games. Yeah, without that, without him, that will uh, that will not be good. Now that they well, lost then, these games, and then they lost a game without having not having Patrick with in in two home games, and then they lost another home game with him with the Indianapolis going in there. Yep. 
So yeah, that's not good. Not good. They're sitting at five and three. Uh, you would need them to win. Then you need them to go six and two. Yeah, they need them to go six and two. But not un not unbelievable. But they do have to play at New England. In I there. need him to be healthy to do that. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe it's better for you to let him sit this one out. He needs to sit out the Denver game. Yeah, I know. I know you, t- I know you talked about it. <laughs> he, they they should have listened to you. They should have listened to you. Uh, Vikings have looked really good. I like the Vikings. Really good. And just tossing it out into the atmosphere... Like Kirk Cousins, MVP candidate. I mean, if they if they go crazy and go like twelve and four, win the division. No. Number one, no. No chance. No chance. No chance. Okay. No chance. I guess it, it would kind of depend on what the Pats do and what everybody else does, right? No. I... Yeah, Kirk is always going to throw that back breaking interception, regardless of and how good has. the team is. He has enough this year. He has. Yeah. No, so... You're right. Now they've only lost two games, but still, I mean this team. This team could be seven and one. That's right. I mean, they really they could be eight and zero. Oh. Yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna roll Vikings here. Well, yeah, without Patrick, I'm rolling Vikings. So I I I do think this is a different kind of team. They are going to be able to run on the Chiefs. Dalvin Cook, as long as he's healthy, uh, they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Correct. Let's move on. Game number four, the Lions and the Raiders. Now, this is the first Raiders home game since September 15th. That's kind of crazy, right? Like They went to London. Seems like a long time. They they went to Indianapolis. That's a that's a real long time. That's a very long time. That's a two, almost two months. Almost two months. But, uh, but they've been all over the place, and they are playing well. Now, the Lions are also playing well. But... Good gracious. Oakland has has really shown improvement this year. Derek Carr looks good. Uh, everybody wants to talk about how he may not be Gruden's guy. But, man, he is making it real, real hard. I don't know what he has to show Gruden. That's what it, I, I'm like, in the same are, boat. What is Gruden looking for? I, Tua? I, I mean, I if he was looking for Tua, like, you'd kind of want to be losing. I would think. He's not looking for two. I don't think he is either. I don't know what you would expect more of a quarterback than what Derek Carr is providing. I don't either. And and last year, it, that was not all on Derek Carr. That was offensive line troubles. You didn't have a running game. Your defense wasn't worth crap. They, Excuse me. Their free agent signings this year have been incredibly successful. Their draft was incredibly successful. That's right. Like, they, they hit on some picks. Like Josh Jacobs. They had a bunch of picks, yeah. and they've done well with them. Josh Jacobs has looked good. Uh, Farrell has looked good. Like they are, they've really hit on some picks. They hit on their free agents, and that's what you got to do. Like I, we all laughed at uh, uh, Mike Mayock and at Gruden. Maybe they know what they're doing. Look, man, you, we get to laugh at Gruden. A, oh, yeah. 10 years, $10 million a year, $100 million contract. That. We get to that's, laugh at Mark Davis too. Yeah, that's stupid. Okay, it's a lot of money. It's a, it's a, it's an obscene amount of money for for what you're getting. Um, and then, you know, we we have evidence that John is sometimes a really good coach. We yeah. also have evidence that sometimes John does things that makes it seem like he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And and you've yep. got to take the good with the bad. Like, when he does stupid stuff, it's okay to laugh at him. Yeah. And when he does great stuff, you stop laughing. You say, damn. There you oh, go. Yeah. It is, uh, it's, it's surprising. It's working out. So. It is definitely surprising. So, yeah, I'm, I'm rolling with the Raiders here at home. Minus two is the number. Yeah. Open as a pick em. I think I'd take the Lions. Lions plus two. And I would assume that you expect them to win, huh? Yeah, with that sort of a line, I'm just going to try to pick Just them. take them to win. Just, that makes just sense. trying to guess the winner. That makes sense. Uh, now, on the Lions side, we'll talk about them for about two seconds here. Uh, this t- like it, They're they're not winning a bunch, but they look good. They look really good. They're in every game. If there was like a 
I know this is a bullshit thing to say. This is a Browns fan thing to say. Like, if there were more victories handed out, they'd be they'd be leading the league. They'd yeah. be undefeated, man. Oh yeah. Out no, they wouldn't. They they got one loss, and that was the tie. Yeah. The one game they didn't lose would be the one non moral victory. No, you're right about they that. They have been in all these other games, or they've pulled them out. No, it, Matt they've... Stafford looks incredible, by the way. Yeah, he does. Matt Stafford has played his butt off this year. They uh they got weapons. Not uh, nearly enough to, uh, credit. Carry on Johnson out. Out. Like, that hurts. That, that hurts. does hurt. But uh, but yeah, I mean, otherwise, like this is a good team. T.J. Hawkinson looks pretty good. Matt Stafford looks good. Like the Hawkinson defense looks good. Really had that great of a, a year, but it, he he looks good blocking. Like not rookie, his rookie, numbers aren't crazy. The worst thing in the world is people to get excited about rookie tight ends. Okay. Because ne'er in the history of rookie tight ends blown up and done anything great. That's and a good it's point. Usually not year two even. It's usually three. What was the best rookie tight end? Like maybe Evan Ingram that year that like that first year he kind of went crazy. I don't know if he went crazy. He had a couple of big games. Yeah, I think that was, that was when everybody was hurt and there was nobody else to throw to. Yeah, that's a good point. But I mean, season long, yeah, he he was okay, but he wasn't he wasn't great. He wasn't he wasn't Hall of Fame, you know, all that kind of mess. So all right, let's move into game number five. Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys going to the New York Giants. It's Monday Night Football. Opened up Cowboys minus nine, and now we're sitting at Cowboys minus seven. A lot of people leaning on the Giants here. That's right. They think man. divisional game. All them New York betters. Yep. Going Dallas going to the cold weather, New York. I look, Dallas has had some problems. I think they're getting the problems fixed. I think Amari Cooper coming back healthy this week. I I think they're gonna be all right. I think they're gonna cover this. Like they they have found a game plan that works against the Giants. I don't think that Daniel Jones is a freaking Pro Bowler yet. He ain't there yet. He's looked okay. Yep. He's not nearly as bad as as everybody made fun of him for. No, but everyone made fun of him because he was taken like sixth overall. Yes. No, you're right about that. But uh, I do like this Cowboys team. I I, I do still think that they've got a chance. Uh, to make some noise in the playoffs and whatnot this year. We'll see. I mean, obviously you gotta win games like this. Right. And I think I think they'll cover. I've got them winning this game. Um so that's that's my pick on it. What uh which way are you leaning? Last time the Cowboys went to uh MetLife. Yeah, they got beat. Yeah. They they got beat by one of the worst teams in all of football. That team has one win. And every loss has been a dog ass loss. Now, to be fair, it was a, a statistical anomaly, right? Like, you read off the stats. It was like teams that have had these stats have won 90 you, times. That tells you how poorly they played the entire game. Now, that's true. That's, that's true. That's the issue. And turnovers and everything else, right? They were just bad. Yeah. And that yeah. team, I do believe, is worse than this Giants team. Oh, 100%. I'd, I'd bet the Giants would be favored by... Six, this seven, is a over situation the Jets. where I would take the points and I'd, I'd pick the Cowboys to win. Giants plus seven, Cowboys straight up. I don't feel great about this game either way, but me either. It, it should they be fun to watch, though. Like, this is oh, a good yes. Monday night game. So, this is definitely better I, I, than yeah, Steelers. A rare Monday night game where I probably won't be betting on. Yeah, I can, uh, I can understand that. Unless you can find some kind of an edge or the line moves a little more, that they're just. Ain't much reason to do that. And so if it sits on seven, it's kind of a stay away spot. All right. Interesting matchups. Let's go ahead and jump into the rapid fire segment. And let's talk first about Thursday night football, the 49ers at the Cardinals. Of course, divisional game. The 49ers have looked dominant. That front seven is legit. I I was wrong about Nick Bosa. I was just wrong. I said during our live draft thing that I thought that there was a strong potential that he could be a bust. Could not have been more wrong. He is, I mean, he, he's he's getting looks for defensive player of the year. Yes, he should. He absolutely should. He's unbelievable. And it's not just in a, him. In a year in which there's a guy with 10 interceptions. Yeah. 10 through eight games. And, and this guy is getting more talk than that guy. It's insane. So, yeah, I... 
I like the 49ers to continue this. I don't know how Kyler Murray and that bunch are going to be able to score on this defense. I don't either. Um, the 49ers are going to hold on to the football. They can run it. With, I mean, they got three running backs that they just pound you with sure. at all times. They are rotating in defensive linemen and linebackers like it's nothing. They, they're just, this is such a dominant football team. And I just don't, I, I don't see how it could possibly derail. Like, I understand Jimmy Garoppolo is not playing, you know, out of his mind at this point. But, I mean, they just, they look so good on the other side of the ball. Well, in, in running the football. Yeah. The offensive, running, this offensive line's not great. This is this is Kyle Shanahan's zone blocking scheme. He's worth every penny he's being paid. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you. I, I like I like the, the Chargers. Or the 49ers. Yeah, the 49ers. Yeah. yeah. Next, uh, Titans at the Panthers. We'll roll through these kind of quick. Titans at the Panthers. Uh, Panthers got demolished in the Bay Area by these 49ers last week. The Titans have won two in a row since they made the switch from Mariota over to Ryan Tannehill. I, I mean, it, it makes you think, eh, maybe the Titans have figured something out. They still probably should have lost both games. That they won both of them. Should have, yeah, could have easily lost both games. Um, but the Panthers, like other than that beatdown in San Francisco, look pretty damn good. Have looked pretty good with uh, with Kyle Allen, and they will continue to do so. Look, Christian McCaffrey, best school player in the NFL. Can we say that? Mm. How about this top five school player in the yes, NFL? No question about that. There you go. No question right. about that. So, how I many mean, Alvin Kamara would have something to say about that? Yeah. You might be right. You might be right. So, the Panthers are minus four here. I think this is kind of a sucker bet because they've, they've got it right over the field goal. So, everybody would typically play the Titans. Like, that. that's what the masses would do, right? Play the Titans because, oh, they're on a winning streak and, all oh, these Panthers just got demolished and da 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 I think the Panthers are way better than the Titans. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I might be crazy for that. And I could no. come back next week and be like, yeah, I was Listen, wrong. the Titans could win this game, but I, I agree with the fact that the Panthers are better than the Titans. They just are. And they're at home. Titans going on the road. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. All right, next up, Colts at the Steelers. This is a funky line. James Conner might be out. You got the Steelers starting a backup quarterback, Mason Rudolph, uh, who just came back from a you know concussion protocol. Uh, Steelers did not look great against the Dolphins, and yet... They are a one-point favorite at home against the Indianapolis Colts. Colts hadn't looked great either. But the Colts have absolutely looked great. They just lost two bad games. Well, and, and they won last week and still didn't look okay. good. All right. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> they won the game. They looked really bad. And they looked really bad in the Raiders game. Yeah. That's it. Other yeah. than that, they played great. They played really well. And I... I this I obviously I am the the Steelers guy on okay. here. I think the Colts win this game. I think the Colts are going to beat them bad. I don't know that they beat them bad because that that Steelers defense is still pretty good. That Steelers defense gave up fourteen points to a team that sucks that has no skill whatsoever. They yeah, but they Do gave you know it the up early. That played for the the Dolphins. Ryan Fitzpatrick. What? Okay. Nope. That's right. Do you do you know the starting running back that played for the Dolphins? Uh, what's the not, what's the kid's name? It was not Kenyon Drake. No, no, no. Was it was Kenyon uh, B- uh, Balaja. What what's his name? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Kelvin Balaj. Balaj. That's it. That's it. Yeah. All right. No, I, I understand. I didn't, I didn't like, think you would know this. I'm things. not saying that the Dolphins are a you good were talking team. Talking about how good that defense was. I thought, no, I understand. Look, they gave up 14 points early. It was just a, a a fluky kind of thing. But the defense has played well. Defense has definitely played well. Okay. So, you know, we'll they see. Have, they have played well. That is correct. So. Kalen Balazs was not the running back last night. Who, who was the running back? Balazs played. Balazs got three carries for eight yards. I knew I remembered him playing. I watched the game last night. Mark, well, I didn't watch the second of the game. <laughs> so I'm not going <laughs> to pretend that I did. I saw the score was 14 nothing. I laughed. I turned it off. And look, I was. Mark Watson. Watson. Mark Watson. Watson. Mark W-A- Walton. W A L T O N. Not Watson. Walton. Wal- Walton? Walton. Mark. Okay, okay, okay. I, no, look, I, I had the boy by myself last night. 
My wife. Uh, uh, no, you're good. You know, you're good. She's, she's would... in uh, school for her doctorate right you're now, fine. so I am getting a lot of time with the 17 no, month old. So you're good. I didn't watch a second of it. So I, we... I asked, assuming that you didn't know the answer, and I was just. Oh no! Laugh. It's any time that I'm home with him by myself. That's we, and I know this ain't great for brain development. I understand, but it is football season, and we sat and he, football, football, and it's. Yes, that's right. It's football. That's right. Go Steelers. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, certainly not least, the Chicago Bears playing at the Philadelphia Eagles. They're absolutely least. This is, uh, well, the, the Bears might be. The Eagles kind of turned around a little bit the last Eagles week. Fine. The Bears need a win in a big way. They are not going to make the playoffs this year. Is it fair to say... how? It, So, Trubisky has, what, two more years? Well, next year, and then they have to pick up a player option, right? Okay. I think they can cut after after this year. That's what I was going to ask. I might be wrong about that. I'm not great on NFL rookie contracts or contracts in general, unless I, like, somebody got signed yesterday and then I know what it was. So, the Titans this year picked up Ryan Tannehill off the trash heap and brought him in just to give a little bit of a competition. With Marcus Mariota. And he won the competition. And he won the competition. Next year, you've got Mariota. You've got, I wouldn't imagine that the Bucks keep Jameis Winston. Can't, can't, can't imagine they're going to do that. There's several different other options out there. Andy Dalton, of course, lost his job. Any of these, I think, might work better for the Bears than what they have currently? Is that fair to say? I, I think there's going to be a quarterback in this draft for them to go get. They don't have their first round pick. I get it. Somebody there's a there's a crap ton of quarterbacks coming out in this draft. Somebody's fallen to the second round. That's just happening. Yeah. No, you're probably right. I mean that the the Broncos got Drew Locke in the second round last year. Yeah. And everybody thought that he might be a top ten. Yeah. So, so it, somebody somebody in this draft has fallen. Yeah. No, you're you're right about that. You're right. So so yeah, that's I, I think that's the most interesting question about this game in particular is, can the Bears do anything on offense to be able to get a win? No, I don't think they can. I don't trust Mitchell Trubisky anymore. And you know who I'm also losing faith in? I think I'm losing faith in Matt Nagy because of Trubisky. Or see, here's the problem: I watched other OCs and other head coaches that are offensive minded guys take mediocre to bad quarterbacks and at least put together some semblance of an offense. And you've, you've seen guys take average quarterbacks and turn them into world beaters. Like it, and, and he, we can't even get like a consistent, like anything that semblance a real offense in Chicago. Yeah, you should be able to put together some kind of a game plan to, to make the guy successful. How, right? many, how many quarterbacks went down and backups came in? And, like, Kyle Allen looks pretty good. Yeah, he's a backup. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew's a rookie. Yeah, like. And like, and Jacksonville is not known for being, like, like they're not known for their offensive. Juggernaut. Yeah, they're no. not known for offensive prowess. This is this is what I'm saying about how much of this is. No, listen, don't get me wrong. Trubisky's got to go situation. Yeah. But, but this might be a naggy got to go situation, too. I mean, that's crazy. He's he only was, been there, like, three brought, years. He was brought in. Fix the offense. They've brought in three or four guys in the last couple of years to fix the offense. Now, you know their offense coordinator was Marcus Mariota's offensive coordinator at Oregon the last two seasons he was there. I don't know that matters. I'm just saying, it, Mariota did outstanding things at Oregon. I was in college. I'm just saying. There's, there's at least a little familiarity there. Mariota at I, Tennessee... I need to figure out why Mariota... Mariota had five different offensive coordinators with the Titans. I understand it's the NFL, but that's got to be tough at some point. At right? some point in time, they're not out there throwing the football for you. I understand that. Now, he's not giving the ball away, but I mean, it could it could very well be all of the coordinators. It's totally possible. Either way. All right, that's going to wrap up this week's NFL Week 9 Big Game Previews. I guess some of these are big games. Anyway, all right, this is Winning Cures Everything, of course. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check us out over there, all of our social media platforms. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, 
We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Tell us what you like this week, what you don't like. Tell us uh, tell us who you think should be the next quarterback for the Bears. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get into that in the uh, in the comments. If you're listening on the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., tell all your buddies about it. Hit that subscribe button. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure and leave us a nice five-star written review. We'll read it on the show if you're funny enough. Even if you're not, we'll probably still read it because we enjoy these things. But, uh, but yeah, leave us a review. Tell us uh, what you like about the show, man. We, we really appreciate you guys coming in here with us every week. We have a damn good time during football season. And, uh, and in the off season, of course, we continue to do this. We talk all the latest news, all the, all the whatever. So we keep it going even after football season. So make sure and stick with us. And, of course, we appreciate Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. We highly recommend everything down there. Like We make the trip regularly. It is awesome. It is a short drive from Memphis. Uh, so we we love it down there. All the sports books, everything else, they are doing some wonderful stuff. Go check them out, tunicatravel.com. We appreciate you guys being here. We will see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.